Let's take a moment for another prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we pray that you'd guide and direct us. Open all of our minds to you. Help us to be willing to be submissive to you. Help us to stand for truth in every manner. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> and good morning again. It's wonderful to be able to go to the Word of God and explore. And I'd like us now to go to Matthew, the fifth chapter. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into the mountain, a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What is meant by poor in spirit? Spiritual poverty, yes. Have you ever thought of what it might be like to be poor in spirit? Who is poor in spirit? Okay, those that don't recognize their need? Or, or pardon me? Those who do recognize their need? Okay. I'd like to uh, pretty much just uh, read out of uh, some of these books that have uh, been given to us to expand our knowledge on the Bible. Now, there's several different places I'll be reading from. One is first uh, first book of selected messages, and starting on on page uh, three twenty seven. We are to surrender our hearts to God, that He may renew and sanctify us and fit us for His heavenly court. We are not to wait for some special time, but today we are to give ourselves to Him, refusing to be ser the servants of sin. You notice, refusing to be servants of sin. Do you imagine you can leave off sin a little at a time? Oh, leave the accursed thing at once. Hate, that, hate the thing that Christ hates. Love the things that Christ loves. Has he not, by his death and suffering, made provision for your cleansing from sin? When we begin to realize that we are sinners and fall on the rock and be, to be broken, the everlasting arms are placed about us and we are brought close to the heart of Jesus. Then we shall be charmed with his loveliness and, disgust, and disgusted with our own righteousness. We need to come close to the foot of the cross. The more we humble ourselves there, the more exalted will God's love appear. The grace and righteousness of Christ will not avail him for him who feels whole. For him who thinks he is reasonably good, who is contented with his own condition, there is no room for Christ in the heart of him who does not realize his need of divine light and aid. Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. There is fullness and grace in God, and we may have his spirit and power in large measure. Do not feed on the husks of self-righteousness, but go to the Lord. He has the best robe to put upon you, and his arms are open to receive. Christ will say, take away the filthy garments from him and clothe him with change of raiment. <clears throat> I've met people, I start talking with religion about them, or, or to them about religion, and uh, they say, well, I'm, I'm pretty good, I, I'm fine, I'm, I'm not a bad person. 
That's kind of self-righteous, isn't it? I'm not a bad person, but are you a good person? <laughs> are you one that serves the Lord? Now let's look at Luke 6.20. Luke 6.20 And he lifted up his eyes on his, on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. <clears throat> you that are poor are blessed. Do you feel that you have a need of God? Do you feel that you have a, to better your relationship with Him? Then right, right then you're going to receive a blessing because you recognize your greater need for Him than you have in the past. Let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16, verse 19. Better it is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. <clears throat> I'm sure most every one of us in this room have felt a desperate desire to have a closer relationship with the Lord at one time or another in their life. I'm sure that most of us have had the, the uh, relationship with him that we thought we were ha having a pretty good relationship with him and then something happened. And then we realized how much greater of a relationship we needed with him. Proverbs 28. Proverbs 28, verse 13. He that covereth his, sin, covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso con confesses and, forsake, and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Do you wish for the mercy of the Lord? Even that which you don't think you've done can be something that you've done and don't even realize it. Pride is something that creeps up on us. It's something that we get to thinking, I don't need God anymore. I'm doing pretty good. I've achieved. And then the fall comes. Pride always comes before it fall. There's, there's a, a fall attached to pride every time. And sometimes it's pretty severe. We have what we call mountaintop experiences. I don't know how many of you have ever stood on top of a tall mountain, but uh, there's, there's something electrifying, I mean literally electrifying, about standing up on top of a tall mountain. You see, the static electricity gathered on the earth sweeps up the, to the top of a mountain and, and sometimes your hair can just stand on end. It's literally electrifying. And that's a dangerous situation. You don't want that to happen. <laughs> uh, say again? Lightning. Lightning, that's right. Uh, but mountain climbers are addicted because when you get on top of that mountain, there's such an exhilarating feeling. Physically, an exhilarating feeling. When we have an, a mountaintop experience with the Lord, we've had a relationship with Him of some special blessing has taken place. And it's exhilarating. We don't want it to end. But then, it does end. 
we, we, you might say, come down off the mountain. And then sometimes we go into a depression because we don't have that exhilarating feeling anymore. But our faith in Him isn't depending on, on that. Our faith has to be faith when they're in, we're in the valley of despair. Because the valley of despair is going to destroy us. You think Abraham, when he was told to give his son as a sacrifice, he wasn't in a valley of despair? But he was still counted the father of the faithful. Because he went through with what God told him to go through. A mountaintop experience is great. We all need them. You know, this, the, the Lord brought the disciples. Christ brought the disciples to a literal mountaintop experience. When he was transfigured before them. They saw him with, enshrouded in a bright light. But then they came down off that mountaintop, and what was it? The other disciples were arguing. They were, they were wondering about things taking place. One of the things was that uh, they were unable to cast a devil out. This was depressing to them because they had to cast out other devils. And so they didn't realize that it took a deeper experience with the Lord. We don't want to stay long in the valley of despair. We're told in Spirit of Prophecy that when you're despairing, sing and pray, and you will find that you have sung and prayed yourself into a, a, a better reason. Pardon? I said you will sing and praise yourself out of despair. Out of despair, okay. I forgot the last part of the quote. <laughs> uh, but these experiences are important to us too, because then by having done that, we recognize it's possible, no matter what the situation, to do that. The book Education, page 79. Christ was a faithful reprover. He never lived in others. He never lived, no. He never lived there and, now oh, wait a minute, what? Christ was a faithful reprover. He never lived there another. That's what it says. I didn't really caught that before. Who so hated evil. Okay. He never lived there another who so hated evil. Never lived there another. I'll get it right. Who so hated evil. Never another whose denunciation of it was so fierce, fearless. To all things untrue and base, his very presence was a rebuke. In the light of his purity, men saw themselves unclean. Their lives aims, the life's aims, men mean and false. Yet he drew them. He who had created man understood the value of humanity. Evil he denounced as the foe of those whom he was seeking to bless and to save. In every human being, however fallen, he beheld a son of God, one who might be restored to the privileges of his divine relationship. You know what? We need children in our church. Don't, this, don't have a problem with that. Without children in our church, our church is going to die. Amen. Amen. God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Looking upon men in their suffering and degradation, Christ perceived ground for hope where appeared only despair and ruin. Wherever there existed a sense of need, 
There he saw the opportunity for uplifting souls, tempted, defeated, feeling themselves lost and ready to perish. He met not with denunciation, but with blessing. The other day I was at Walmart. And there was a child just screaming, screaming, screaming. And a grandfather shopping with his child in the carrier. And this child was absolutely throwing a tantrum. That I've never seen one so violent. And he was doing his shopping. And he checked out about the same time I checked out. I went, put my stuff in my truck. And he was in a truck just a few vehicles away from mine. And I could see the man was just crushed. Crushed with embarrassment. And I said to him, sir. And he said, what? I know he thought I was going to reprimand him for something. But I said, I feel for you. I understand. And the Lord loves you. And he said, he straightened up and he says, I'm able to get rid of him in a few minutes. <laughs> you know, just a little lift can help people. The, the, the Beatitudes were his greeting to the whole human family. Looking upon the vast throng gathered to listen to the Sermon on the Mount, he seemed for a moment to have forgotten that he, he was not in heaven, and he used the familiar salutation of the word, world of light. From his lips flowed blessings as a, the gushing forth of a long sealed fountain. Turning from the ambitious, self-satisfied favorites of this world, he declared that those were blessed. He declared that those were blessed, who, however great their need, would receive his light and love. To the poor in spirit, the sorrowing, the persecuted, he stretched out his arms, saying, "Come unto me, and I will give you rest." God understands our every trial, whether it be a screaming child that we can get rid of in a few minutes, or maybe our own child that's screaming. You know, God cares. He knows the trials that a mother goes through. He knows the trials that a father goes through. And he knows the trials that a grandparent goes through. He knows the trials that a brother goes through, or a sister. And he cares. He doesn't want you to get in despair about it. But take it to the Lord, because the Lord does care. A little book, Thoughts from the Mount of Blessing. Page 7. <laughs> Jesus had presented... Yeah. Jesus had presented the cup of blessing to those who felt that they were rich and increased with goods and had need of nothing, and they had turned with scorn from the gracious gift. He who feels whole, who thinks he is reasonably good, and is contented with his condition, does not seek to become a partaker of the grace and righteousness of Christ. Pride feels no need, and so it closes the heart against Christ and the infinite blessing he came to give. There is no room for Jesus in the heart of such a person. 
Those who are rich and honorable in their own eyes do not ask in faith and receive the blessing of God. They feel that they are full, therefore they go away empty. Those who know they cannot possibly save themselves or of themselves do any righteous action are the ones who appreciate the help that Christ can, give, can bestow. They are the poor in spirit whom he declares to be blessed. Whom Christ pardons, he first makes penitent and in the office of the Holy Spirit to convince of sin those whose hearts have been moved by convicting, by the convicting Spirit of God see that there is nothing good in themselves. They see that all they have ever done is mingled with self and sin. Like the poor publican, they stand afar off and not daring to lift up so much as their eyes to heaven and cry, God be merciful to me, a sinner. And the blessed, and they are blessed. Therefore is forgiven, excuse me, there is forgiveness in the penitent, for Christ is the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. God's promise is, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. A new heart also will I give you, and I will put my spirit within you. Of the poor spirit, in spirit, Jesus says, There is a kingdom, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This kingdom is not, as Christ's hearers had hoped, a temporal and earthly dominion. Christ was opening to men the spiritual kingdom of his love, his grace, his righteousness. The ensign of the Messiah's reign is distinguished by the likeness of the Son of Man. His subjects are the poor in spirit, the meek, the persecuted for righteousness' sake. The kingdom of heaven is theirs. Though not yet fully accomplished, the work is begun in them, which will make them meet, for, meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. You want to own heaven? Don't think too highly of yourself. <laughs> That's really what it comes down to. You want to own heaven? We have the option. It's offered. You know, I own a little piece of Maine. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I long for a little piece of heaven. Doesn't take much. Just recognize who you are. How wonderful. We serve a wonderful God. This is from... Uh, That's terrible. <laughs> Technology is terrible sometimes. Well, maybe I can get this quickly, maybe I can't. Okay, I'll pass that one. One of the best quotes that I came across was in uh, 2 SP, Second Spirit of Prophecy, uh, page 204, paragraph 2 through 205, paragraph 1. Wow, it's, a, it's really a great... Uh, if you have Spirit of Prophecy, uh, I, I, I can get it again, but uh, I just wouldn't want to take the time to look it up at the moment. Um, it, it's a very great text on the on uh, the first uh, 
of the Beatitudes here. Blessed are the poor in spirit. The poor in spirit, by the way, several times here he's mentioned a contrite heart. Do you know the meaning of contrite? Collapsed, okay. Collapsed, broken, crushed. Have you ever felt crushed? Crushed in the heart? Then you have the option of being blessed. A contrite spirit, a contrite heart. You come to the point of where you're, you're crushed. Now there's help for you. Now you can be lifted up out of that despair that you've been, and some, sometimes people grab a hold of the despair and hang on to it. They, they, do, they feel desperate not to let it go. Pardon me. But when you're truly crushed and you, you're poor in spirit, then you're ready to be lifted up out of that. Then you're ready for Christ to come into your heart, if you'll let him. Just surrender to him. It sounds so simple, and it really is. Revelation 3. Revelation 3, verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither hot nor cold. I would thou were hot or cold. If you're, if you're crushed and have a contrite heart, you're cold. Now there's help for you. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And you don't know, thou, and knowest not, that thou art wretched, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy me, uh, buy me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh, I grant to sit with me on my throne, in my throne even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. You want a little piece of heaven? Don't be lukewarm. If you're hot, then you're a force for Christ. Going out and giving it to others. If you're cold, there's hope for you because you realize you're so cold. Desire of Ages, 299. Desire of Ages, 299. <clears throat> Christ's first words to the people on the mount were these, were these words of blessing. Happy are they, he said, who recognize their spiritual poverty and feel their need of redemption. <clears throat> the gospel is to be preached to the poor, not to the spiritually proud, who, those who claim to be rich and in need of nothing. It is revealed, is it revealed, but to those who are humble and contrite. One fountain only has been opened for sin, a fountain for the poor in spirit. <clears throat> Pardon me. The proud heart strives to earn salvation, 
but both our titles to heaven and our fitness for it are, are found in the righteousness of Christ. The Lord can do nothing toward the recovery of man until convinced of his own weakness and stripped of his self-sufficiency, he yields himself to the control of God. Then he can receive the gift that God is waiting to bestow. From the soul that feels his need of uh, need, from the soul that feels his need, nothing is withheld. He has unrestricted access to him who whom all fullness dwells, in whom all fullness dwells. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth, inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in a high and holy place with him that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. In Isaiah, Isaiah 1, Isaiah 1, verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. You want a little piece of heaven? You want to eat some of the fruit from there? Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36, 27, no, 26 and 27. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put it within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments to do them. I'm going to leave you with that this morning, this afternoon now. There's a lot about Blessed are the meek, are, 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 I mean, the, the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's not that we have an, a chance at it. It's not like a lottery. It's yours. Get a hold of it. And don't let it go.